Hey there, uh, I'm Sergeant Rolls, and you are listening to Season 2, Episode 6 of Our Minuteman Moment. As most of you may know, April is Month of the Military Child. So in honor of that observance, we have with us Mr. Ian, who is a military child. Welcome. Hello. And we also have Tech Sergeant Porter with us, who is one of our PAs. And also a military child. And... A military child yeah, as well. Yeah, thanks. I want oh. the credit where credit is due, please. Okay, Speaking okay. of which, weren't you also a military child? I was a military all child. All right. Let's all yeah. high-five each other. <laughs> wow, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore that they're all off. So it's fine. Yeah, just don't pay any attention to yeah. that. All right. Well, since we have three military children here, and I'm the interviewee. Interview interviewer. Er, er. And you are the oh. interviewee. Uh, you can interview me too. Yeah, I think that would be fun. All right. So, all right. <clears throat> I guess, you know, being a military child, from my experience, uh, I grew up in the military. My dad was military until I was about 14. Um, and then he joined the guard, so it wasn't as bad. But I will say, growing up in middle school, upper elementary school, even into high school, it was hard for me to leave my friends when I, every time I had to PCS or move, I guess. Um, so, yeah, what, so you're a little bit fresher on the right, uh, so. <laughs> age spectrum. So how does that feel to you? You know, um, moving schools every few years, it was, r it was rough leaving my friends behind, but, um, I think I was lucky enough to be in that age group where I didn't really miss my friends for too long because they're like kindergarten, first grade, second grade, those friends, right. third grade, we were in Arkansas. Yeah. So okay. That's fair. I was too young to really like miss my friends mm. yeah well is there anything that you liked about moving like i liked uh I, I liked not being in the same state for that long a restless soul ladies and gentlemen <laughs> so like when you're so since your parents were military and stuff where of all the places that you've lived what's your favorite place um, um i lived in hawaii california and arkansas it was those three mm -hmm. um I think, crazily, Arkansas has been my favorite place so far. All right, just leave. I don't want to leave. <laughs> I'm yeah. cutting off this interview right now. Um, if it was a choice between Arkansas and California, I would have chose, like, California or Hawaii. But I've been here so long. Yeah. It's like sto I'm Stockholm Syndrome to, to Arkansas. Right on. A little <laughs> bias now. Right on. I bet you're a Razorback fan, too, aren't you? Wait, are you? Don't tell Dave. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, when I was growing up, uh, I was born in California, then it was Arizona, and then it was Germany, and then uh, Nebraska, and that's where my dad retired. And he didn't do guard or anything, just did his 21 years, and then that was it. Okay. So um, I have some memory of Germany, you know, um, but uh, all my childhood was Nebraska, and I don't know, that might... And, then all of a sudden we moved to uh, San Antonio, Texas, and I was like, you know, we didn't have any family there. It was a, it was a, it was a good military town, you know. Right. So that's how I landed in San Antonio. I don't know, but I, I refer to that as home. Is that where you live the longest? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Go Spurs, go. Anyways, but yeah. I, don't I know, I know you can't, yeah. you can't, you couldn't see her eye roll, but it, it was there, folks. Trust yeah. me. It was true. It was. So, okay, so, you know, we got a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different opportunities to travel and stuff. Um, you know, is that something that you, like, traveling back and forth and doing all these different things, and, you know, do you often ever feel like, I mean, Sergeant Porter, for you growing up, mm -hmm. and then Ian, for you now, do you feel like you have a different perspective on things or a different outlook on life or... Uh, higher expectations, different expectations than your friend? Um, and if so, what are they? Like, how do, how do you feel like you differ from... <laughs> I'm like, he's still a kid. Don't give him a 32-part question. I know, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, Purple. <laughs> I would say that uh, I think it's weird when people just endlessly deny ever leaving their hometown. Oh, it's yeah. like you can love your hometown and be proud of where you're from, but, like, do you really just never want to leave your hometown? I just, I don't understand it. It's maybe it's because I've been in a lot of different places, all over Arkansas, all over California, 
Um, I just don't understand when people are like, this is my hometown. I'm never going to leave it. Yeah. That, that baffles me, honestly. I mean, yeah, that's, I feel like that's more Stockholm syndrome than anything, you know. Yeah, there's people who are just <coughs> like, I've never left the state before, and they're graduating high school, and they're like, oh, I'm going to Tennessee for the first time. And I'm like, it's, you know, it's only two hours away, <laughs> you know. So, but it's, I don't know, I think it's like a cool thing to have that opportunity. Like, we've all been overseas because of a parent or been to other states, you know, like, Ian was born in California, lived in Hawaii. Lived and in then California for a little bit, right? Uh-huh, and then lived in California, and then l- grew up in Arkansas, you know? Right. Like, where's home for you? I don't know, because it's just kind of floating b- on the wind, you know? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. My my kiddo, uh, my firstborn, Paz, uh, he was born in Ankara, Turkey, and, um, and uh, then we went to here, and then... They remember, they remember, uh, well, Laz m- more remembers Germany, but my daughter was born here, and then we went, moved to Germany, and then done active yeah. duty, and now I'm in the guard, so. But, uh, yeah, I don't remember, I guess I had Germany too much, but <coughs> speaking of overseas, um, you've deployed, mm-hmm. I've deployed, um, you've had parents that have deployed. Tell, uh, from the flip side, you know, we know our hardships. We're missing you guys, but what kind of um, environment were you dealing with at home? And you know what was going on in your head? Well, when I was old enough to know what deployment was, it was always a worry that my parents were deploying to an unsafe place. Yep. Like when mom was in Honduras or dad was in Afghanistan, I was always a worry. I was like, they're going to deploy, and I'm never going to see my mom or dad again. Um, I obviously missed my parents, but I always had a parent there, whether yeah. it was dad or yeah. mom. But uh, the main concern was, like, I knew they were going to unsafe places. That was, like, the point. And uh, my main worry or fear was always that they were going to die while they were over there, and okay. I wasn't going to see them again. Did you ever, like, act out, act up? Because my, my kiddos did that. when uh, I, uh, I acted out for attention a lot because, Mom, you, were, you used to work pretty, like, mean hours. Right. So I used to act out for attention a lot because I felt like Mom was working way too much. Yeah. Um, I don't do that anymore. Uh, I feel like I see my parents too much now. <laughs> He's 16, everybody. So. I'm like, you know that's I mean. normal, right? <laughs> like that, that, That's what they consider normal. So, um, yeah, that's what we're all talking about, the flip side, the military child side. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't have any regrets. It was hard for me uh, moving around. I think the, la- the last time when we, um, my dad left the Air Force and we moved to San Antonio and, you know, we're, like, settling – I don't know. That was the, like the hardest transition because I was going into sixth grade and I was just like, ah, ah. Yeah. just had to like maybe two meltdowns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know for me, like our last PCS, our last move, I was 15. I was in high school. Oh, there you go. And I had been going to private school. I went to Catholic school like my whole life. And so. So prim, so proper. Mm, <laughs> uh, so I not only left th- literally everybody I knew. Mm-hmm in high school and had to start at a brand new high school when I went to public school and it was really scary. <laughs> You're like, ew, and gross. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was a definitely a hard adjustment. Um, mm-hmm. Like at that point, I feel like, I don't know, maybe e- you can kind of like chime in on this about, you know, being a teenager and, you know, what, what you have established with your friends and your peers and stuff like that. But um, for me, when I got to the school I was going to for the for tenth through twelfth grade, everybody already knew each other. Yeah. Everybody already had their cliques. Everybody already had their best friends. So, because my dad was military, I I mean I was pretty versatile. I was I was able to make friends easily, but it was really hard for me at that point because there's we're older, you know, mm-hmm. a- and in my opinion, it was like the worst time oh, yeah. to move. But that was my hardest move too. Was the very last one, just mm-hmm. because I just I could I I didn't really know what to do. You know, all my friends that I knew were gone back in Mississippi where we lived, and um, all the new friends I had were like I honestly they I they weren't my friends for very long. So right. most of them I don't even talk to anymore because as soon as I graduated high school, I left, 
and I went <laughs> to the military. So <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Yeah. I don't even know these people. Yeah, I don't know you. Uh, <laughs> no, like yeah, but my uh, I re- I remember having our time, and but um, the PCS. So the last place we lived was uh, in California. Oh yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> Nebraska and then California and then done. Um, so uh, yeah, my brother, my oldest brother, he was going into his senior year, and we moved that summer to my dad's last location. And he's yeah. like, "It was my senior year. I knew everybody." And I was like, yeah. "You know, at the time, I was like, shut up. We're all moving.' Yeah. But uh, you know, yeah. I was like, that's, ha- that's that had rough. to be tough. Yeah. Rough. Like I couldn't imagine. I mean, that's why I got out of active <coughs> duty because I know like we had been here for so long. Mm-hmm. And Cole and Ian were at that point <coughs> where they were starting to get that way, where they were making their friends, and yeah. they they liked being here. And, uh, you know, their dad liked their dad moved here, <laughs> so he was close to them, you yeah. know. And so uh, I was just like, I can't do to them what my dad did to me, you know. It wasn't like it, he was doing something intentional to me, but – I remember how it made me feel. Yeah. So I had an opportunity to come to the guard, and I took it just so, you know. Well, there's m- multiple reasons, yes, I, but yeah. one of my main... She wasn't only thinking of you, man. Yeah, it's oh. not like that. One of my main <laughs> reasons for coming to the guard is so my kids... So I wouldn't get PCS so the kids could stay here with yeah. her and, like, have, like, an established home, you know? Stable. Yeah. Yeah. And I knew I wouldn't deploy as much, mm-hmm. and I could be home with them and... It was just, just seemed like a good choice to me. Oh, yeah. So. I'm, I don't regret coming to the Guard at all either. So, um, granted, it was um, you know, a little bit after I left active duty. But, yeah, I was just like, you know, I had my own reasons. But, yeah, no regrets. Yeah. I, uh, I think about the school thing you said with, like, making new friends and all that. I think if you're, like, moving states often, you get pretty good at sliding in with friend groups that are already established. Mm-hmm. But it makes it really hard to make, like, actual friends right. because you meet these people, your friends, you're like, I'm just going to move in a few years. So they're my, you're like, my friends at school, I'm not going to bother to get to know them. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that's a very valid point. I mean, like. True. I mean, it's kind of like what I just said. Like, when I was in high school, I had the, I had friends. And as soon as I graduated, I left. And I talked to Val and uh, my friend Meg. Oh, you know Meg. Oh, I know Meg. <laughs> yeah. Edie, you know Meg? I do not know Meg. You don't know Meg? I don't oh my know gosh, Meg. you need to know Meg. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, it's it's just maybe it's like a subconscious mindset that you develop, like, eh, whatever, okay, I'll see you later and never talk to you again unless I see you sometime down the road, you know. Mm. So but uh I know like whenever when I was deployed in Honduras and you were at home with your dad, um one of the things I liked was that I had the ability to just FaceTime with you whenever I wanted to see you. You were yeah. still in the same time zone, too. Like, jeez. Yeah, we That's were. That's lucky. Still, yeah. Like, uh, I've been pretty lucky with my deployments. Mm. I've only been <laughs> in the same time zone. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty lucky, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was one of the things that I remember about when I was a kid. When my dad was deployed, like, we had to literally write letters. We didn't have oh, email. Yeah. We had to, or we would take videotapes. You're old. How old? I'm just kidding. You're old. (laughs) So old. Whatever. But we would make (laughs) videotapes. (gasps) Get out. Now, videotapes, that's pretty cool. Turning off your phone. Right. Uh, Yeah, we would make videotapes and we would, with like a VHS, and we would mail them to my dad. And then he would take the VHS tape, do something like a video, and mail it back to us of like, you know, like what it looked like outside or, you know. Just something silly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. No, but I we, mean it. I mean, yeah. Technology has definitely made deployments a lot more yeah. bearable for uh, all sides. Yeah, because I mean, I got to talk to Ian. I got to talk to you like a few times a week. I thought it was almost like every day. But yeah, it was almost every day. I would call and FaceTime with you and Cole, and it was it made it easier. And the difference from from that, you know, from my my last deployment on active duty. To thinking about how it was when my dad was in mm-hmm. active duty <laughs> deployed, yeah, I'm like that's such a huge difference, you know. It's just crazy to, I don't know. But still, even talking with like younger kids, so my son was old enough um, to uh, while I was stationed here, he was old enough to be like, you know, he was in uh, preschool, like the closest one right before 
kindergarten, I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. But um <clears throat> like <laughs> I would uh, I would go home, go home. I would go to the office. I was uh, deployed to UAE. Let me air quotes that my deployment uh, okay. to UAE and um uh, so I would go to the office and I would do like FaceTime with them or you know it didn't have FaceTime then it was the uh, you just off the computer, you know. Skype or something? Yeah, it was Skype or something like that. But uh point is is that you know he he was like oh okay you know they had, had hi blah 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 and uh my daughter you know she's two years younger than him so she's like oh Miss, mr man in the computer yeah. you know like it's like then that's the thing um when i got back and uh yeah that's right you guys even caught a picture of that yep. uh, <laughs> when i got back uh my now ex-wife was like go children run to your father and my son's like, yeah, hey, pop, and like, da, 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 and big hug. And then um, my daughter was like, wait, who am I running to? Yeah. I don't know this guy. And I remember like, that. I was actually, th- I think I was the one that took the photo for yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. But, yeah, that was like, um, that hurt, actually. I'm not going to lie. Because, yeah, my son kind of forgot me, too, uh, you know, in, yeah. in Afghanistan. Yeah. So, it, yeah, I just remember that being a, a thing. But, obviously, that was on my side, not their side. But yeah. I would say, too, like, anytime I would go deploy or TDY and then I'd come back to, like, Cole and Ian, I would be, I would always be more excited to see you guys than you were to see me. Mm -hmm. And I think my feelings were hurt almost every single time. Not, like, bad or anything, (laughs) but just, like, I missed you guys so much. Like, why aren't they running into my arms? Yeah, and you're just like, hi, Mom. (laughs) And we're just, and I'm just like, oh, okay, hugs, 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 you know. It so wasn't the, I think the it's just a movie. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like in the movies. Had, yeah. Right. Oh man. And then the orchestras. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. More so like what about what about you? How did you feel when uh, mom came home? Um, it was nice seeing my mom again. Obviously, but like it was, I knew she would come home. Mm-hmm. So I think I missed her, but like I wasn't surprised when she got home. See? Or, <laughs> or excited, clearly. See. I mean, I knew she would come home, so I was like. It, it wasn't really exciting to me because I was like, I, I know I'll see her again. Okay. All right. I will say, too, that there have been a lot of times, like I know E said that uh, not in this job necessarily, but in other jobs that I've had, um, I've worked like crazy hours. Mm-hmm. And my kids are so like good. Resilient. Resilient yeah. to those. They would either be coming in to work with me at – 11 o'clock at night and sleeping in the cot that's beside my computer desk while I do something or, you know, they're willing to go stay the night at my friend's house Mm -hmm. and she, so she can take care of them and and be with them through the night while I'm working, you know, or having to get up in the middle of the night because I have to do alert photography and I don't have anybody to watch the kids, you know, and I, I like, I like, I like to think that that, not that that was a good thing, but I think that it kind of toughened them up. Toughened them up, maybe showed them some resi- resiliency. Mm-hmm. And um, it's like growing up when we were kids, you know. I, yeah. I was like, I'm a latchkey kid, you know. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, walk home. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mile and a half that way. You'll be all right. Yeah. I have a very distinct memory of in Hawaii, you waking me and call up at like 2 a.m. We had to go to the office, and we just like like lying on the floor with our pillows and blankets, watching Dora yeah. <laughs> on the TV that was above your office. Mm-hmm. I remember that it was because somebody in one of the sections couldn't get the Army Navy game on their. Oh giant my gosh! Yeah, knowledge that's board. Right. Yeah. So, because I d- I did VTCs, yeah. that's what it was. So I was doing VTCs, and they told me there was a VTC emergency. And it was because they couldn't get the Army Navy game. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Right. I was like, seriously. <laughs> I know those that type of emer- emergencies because yeah. I worked in AFN. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, there was a very long talk afterwards that that's <laughs> not going to happen again. Well, but know, yeah, I air remember quotes that. emergency. We don't yeah. do those. Yeah. Let's uh, let's stick with the real. But so was is there anything else like you can think of as far as uh, I don't know uh, advice you can offer? maybe younger kids who listen to this or uh, parents who listen to this that can instill some of these things that we've talked about? Mm. When you're younger, your friends are more temporary. So you shouldn't 
It's like you can obviously like your friends, but you're not going to make real connections with them as you would when you're older. When you're tiny, your connections with your friends are, we both like Legos. Ian, when you get older, your <laughs> cool. connections with your friends are, this guy was here when I got detention and he had my back the whole time, or he saw me do something I wasn't supposed to do and he didn't rat me out. <laughs> or like something as serious as like, we snuck in the woods and drank alcohol for the first time at like 16 <sighs> years oh old. Wait gosh. a minute. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> but like, Just wait till this recording know, right? turns <laughs> off. When, when you're older, your friends, like they have your back. When yeah, you're younger, sure. your friends are just there. And because you're older, I think too, you you have more, you can make better. You make deeper friendships. Deeper friendships and better memories so you can carry those friendships on into Rather adulthood. Rather than basing it off of Legos or, oh, right. you like popsicles? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I dope. like popsicles that's too. Dope. Let's go. Yeah. We're best friends. I know, right? Did we just did, become did best friends? Did we just <laughs> become best friends? <laughs> I bet we did. <laughs> Will you do karate in the garage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I, um, I'm really glad you came, and I'm so proud to be your mom, and thank you for being part of my military life and staying resilient and strong through it. <laughs> You're a good kid, and I think you I think you turned out pretty dang awesome. I came and out half-baked, but I finished near the end. <laughs> <laughs> and Laszlo and Elena, if you ever hear this, I know you won't. I, I kind of like you, too, so oh, well done. Betty loves you. <laughs> We are Mission Ready Airmen, providing premier training to the C-130 and cyber enterprises, capitalizing on partnerships to support the state and defend the nation. Our vision is to be a diverse family of airmen, dedicated, adaptive, and empowered to lead.